Hi, it's Dwyer. RichardDwyer.com, DwyerCrime.blog. Let's talk about this Jesse Smollett case. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, let me just say, and again, it's February the 16th, 2019, right? Information is pouring in. But first, let me back up a second and just talk about this channel here on YouTube. You know, I take what we do here very seriously, and I mean very seriously. I've talked about cases that have bothered me and after we've talked about the case and after others have talked about the case and after there's been a public outcry, new trials have been ordered, convictions overturned. Right? David Temple, murder case, murder conviction, overturned. Dana Chandler, murder case. Murder conviction overturned, right? We keep an eye on these cases because we're looking for the truth. You look at a case file, you look at news in the public arena, and you understand that some people, in my opinion, are being wrongfully convicted, right? Let's go further. There are times where I've stated an opinion here that someone in prison for terrible crimes like murder or someone who escaped from prison or got paroled from prison shouldn't have been in prison. And I understand that many times I'm going against public opinion, certainly the opinions of the prosecutors in the case. So I believe John Malone is an innocent man who today is in prison, right? I've made a video on him. Lori Ben Benick. I don't believe she did the crime. Right? Carol Ann Fugate. And I appreciate all the feedback I've gotten regarding Miss Fugate from people who were alive when the murders took place. Right? Some people who knew Miss Fugate actually left comments in the comment section of that video. Right? I personally would not have convicted her. Well, that brings us to Jesse Smollett, his accusations. Right? He sat down with Robin Roberts. He talked about what happened to him. He talked about how he was able to get away. And let me just say, and I have to pick my language carefully here because he is still contending that he was a victim of a hate crime right all I'm doing here is giving you my opinion based on the facts right but let's just say from the outset based on this set of facts I had a lot of doubts about his story. His version of events just doesn't make sense to me. Let me right here encourage people who believe he's telling the truth to leave their comments in the comment section of this video. Let's go through his story. It is freezing in Chicago. It is around 2 a.m., 2 in the morning in Chicago, cold January night. Smollett has just left a Subway sandwich shop. He's holding his sandwich. Right? He's holding his sandwich. He only has one hand free to fight with. Two white men come up to him. They are prepared, in my opinion, based on these facts, and these are the things you look for. 
They're too prepared. Right? In my opinion, a red flag should go up right here. They call him gay slurs. They call him the N-word. They specifically refer to his show, Empire. Right? Now, I have a problem right here. Right? What are two white racists doing watching Empire in their free time? How are they able to watch the storyline of Empire develop to the point where they realize that Smollett plays a gay character in the show? Right? Is, isn't that a problem for you here? It's even worse than that. Smollett is coming back from a sandwich shop. Right? This is a bit random here. He's coming back from a sandwich shop. He has the sandwich in one hand. This isn't a crime of opportunity. This isn't one where I'm a racist, I'm out. And then here's a black guy. And so I decide, you know what? Now's as good a time as any to commit a hate crime. No, that's not what Smollett is alleging. Because these guys not only know who he is, but these guys have a noose on them. And they have bleach on them. Right? These guys are out hunting for black guys. And apparently they're fans of the show Empire. So Smollett's random trip to the subway shop has to be one where these guys have been stalking him. Right? They're already prepared to do something nefarious. Right? How many people do you know? Just common sense. Walk around carrying nooses. And this is Chicago. Right? Jesse Jackson's town. Louis Farrakhan's town. Harold Washington's town. Right? White guys walking around carrying nooses might be noticed by some people. Well, then it gets interesting, too. Because, of course, these guys ambush Smollett. Now, keep in mind, just doing the math, there are two of them, there's one of him, and he's one-handed. Right? CCTV shows him right before the attack. Then there's a 60 second gap. Then you see him after the attack. He's holding a sandwich. Both before and after the attack. He only has one hand. Now these guys aren't there. Just to scare him. Right? You don't carry bleach with you with the intention of throwing bleach on someone if all you want to do is get their attention. No, these guys have the bleach and the noose for a reason, don't they? So, the whole scenario is ridiculous because as they attack one-handed Smollett, right, and he doesn't have a Magnum 357 in the other hand, He's somehow able to defend himself, right? I'm not sure if Bruce Lee or Mike Tyson in his prime would be as efficient as Smollett. He apparently gets these guys to run away, and he's able to leave the scene, still holding his Subway sandwich. And all of this is supposed to have happened. 
at 2 in the morning in freezing Chicago in 60 seconds or less. Right? So Smollett goes on television. You notice he has a cut on his face. In other words, there was a scuffle. Right? The guys put the rope on him. They throw bleach on him. He fights back. Now, if these guys were stalking him, if these guys have the rope and the bleach and have been waiting for exactly the opportunity to go after him, and then he goes to get a sandwich and they say, hey, he's out of the building. They wait for him to come back from the subway, then they leap out and attack him. How could he possibly scare them off in 60 seconds or left with one hand? Folks, it just doesn't make sense. Right? It, to me, it just doesn't sound believable. Maybe he is telling the truth. Maybe he is. But it just doesn't sound believable here. Right? The story, quite frankly, would be more believable if the guys didn't have the rope and the bleach. Then you would think, okay, these are two guys who are out on the street. They see a black guy. Then they recognize him. Because apparently these are the white racists who watch black entertainment. So then they try to rough him up, but they're not really there to rough him up. That's not the scenario that Smollett's put forward. If the guys have a noose and they have bleach, they've been stalking him. They go up to him. They know who he is. Right? They know he plays a gay character on Empire. They know who he is. He's been targeted. He's not the random black guy on the street that some racists are going to rough up. No, no. He's the guy that these men have been stalking. Prepared to attack him. Who then, after putting a rope on him after pouring bleach on him without him dropping his sandwich. Right? They get turned off and move away from him and leave him alone. Right? Well, let me, let me say this. Now we have more evidence. It's soon going to be an avalanche. We're finding out that the white men are actually black men. Right? They're cooperating with police now. In fact, the two black men happen to be friends of Smollett's. They've worked on the Empire show. Right? These aren't just guys who love Empire. These are guys who actually work on episodes of the show. Right? Let me also say, too, that these attackers now claim that at Smollett's direction, they went to a hardware store and bought the rope. Folks, if that's true, it's game over. If someone's able to tell you, yeah, I bought this rope at this department store, there's a chance in 2019 that that person was caught on videotape. Either on the way to the store, entering the stir, store, right? Inside the store on security camera. Worse yet, you know, in this credit day and age, there might be a credit receipt. There might be a cashier who remembers ringing up the guys. Right? Well, let me say too that the guys, according to reports, bought red hats. Apparently they weren't Make America Great Again hats, but they were red hats. And they bought them from some uptown beauty supply store. 
right? Same, same thing, right? There might be tape of these guys buying the hats from the supply store. Here's the coup de grace. The black guys, they're brothers, they're immigrants, like I am, an immigrant. The black guys claim they were paid at least $3,500 by Smollett. I'm guessing there might be bank records here. It might have been deposited, right? Or maybe the brothers received cash and maybe that cash has Smollett's DNA on it. Right again, the evidence is pouring in. I expect it to be an avalanche shortly. So, you have the issue of Smollett at first being reluctant to turn over his phone records. According to reports, he then turns over redacted phone records. Well, understand, the problem is once you have, once you have the alleged attackers in custody, right? And the alleged attackers were in custody and then were released from custody and are supposed to be cooperating with the police. Well, I'm guessing these guys have turned over their own phones. Right? I'm guessing that there are going to be records of phone calls between Smollett and these men. Right? I'm guessing, too, that some of these calls are going to coincide with roughly the time period in which the guys buy the rope and the guys buy the hats. So Smollett goes on Good Morning America and he doesn't say that this is performance art. Right? Rather he's still portraying himself as someone who was attacked. Right? Chicago police have spent a lot of money as you could imagine investigating his claims. Filing a false police report, if that can be proven, is going to place him in legal jeopardy. Right? He'll be at risk of being incarcerated. I'm guessing we're going to have to get a plea deal down the road, somewhere along the line. That's my guess, because the evidence here is overwhelming and the more you look at the crime right he's with one hand leaving a leaving a sandwich shop at two in the morning the attackers are too prepared know who he is have a rope at two in the morning right have bleach at two in the morning keep in mind too if these attackers if these guys turn out to be friends of Jesse's, right? If the attackers have phones, just understand, the police would be able to figure out what cell towers the phones were pinging off of. They'd be able to put these men right by where Jesse was attacked. If that happens, it's game over. Let's say Jesse sticks to his version of events. And these two guys who are cooperating with police stick to their version of events. Well, if the cell phone information shows that the guys were roughly where Smollett was, right? And keep in mind, They've already been identified on the CCTV, right? The two guys who are leaving the scene are the two guys the police talked with. You can actually look at the figures 
And the police, I'm sure, are sophisticated enough to figure out that the guys on the film roughly fit in height and weight the two guys who are cooperating with them. Well, if those two guys have recently bought rope, right? I understand the bleach was in a hot sauce container. If they could explain to the cops how the bleach got in a hot sauce container. In other words, these guys are so prepared. They aren't carrying around a small bleach container. No, they actually are prepared for the attack where the bleach is put in a hot sauce container. Right? My point to you is the two guys cooperating with the police can completely sink Smollett's version of events. So, let's just say I have doubts about Smollett's version of events. I fully expect there to be a plea somewhere along the line. Right? Chicago has a lot of budgetary problems. They can't be wasting a lot of time on fake claims. They just can't. The other problem, too, is in situations like this, where Nancy Pelosi on Twitter expressed um, her concerns over the attack, uh, Kamala Harris expressed her concerns, you have a lot of very powerful people. Speaker of the House, current United States Senator and presidential candidate, who may have been fooled by what may turn out to be a hoax. Right? So it's unfortunate. It's unfortunate. Let me hear your thoughts. It's Saturday night. I'm guessing a week from today. A week from today. I'll be surprised if we don't get definitive proof that Smollett's story doesn't have major inconsistencies and problems. Right? I'm guessing there are going to be physical pieces of evidence that don't fit the narrative. That's one man's opinion. For legal reasons, let me just say, maybe he is telling the truth. Maybe these two friends of his who worked on the show with him aren't telling the truth. Maybe he's a victim and some other people are trying to tar him further. But let's just say I don't think that's the case. Right? A guy who's being stalked. Right? Being stalked. Think Mark David Chapman. Think Robert Bardo. A guy who's being stalked by people nefarious enough to be carrying around bleach in a hot sauce bottle with them. In addition to a noose. Right? That guy wouldn't be able to, in my opinion, with one hand and no firearm defend himself from such prepared and determined stalkers. That's how I see it, certainly not in 60 seconds, without losing the sandwich. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.